The chief complaint from my patient, Weldon, was missing teeth and gaps between his teeth. The preoperative evaluation showed periodontally involved in non-restorable maxillary right teeth, number 2 through 8, and significant periodontal bone loss, which would need to be addressed. The periodontal condition was stable in the patient's left maxilla, and he was satisfied with the existing aesthetics in the quadrant, so we were concentrating on the maxillary right quadrant. We see the preoperative radiographs confirm that the mobile teeth indeed need to be removed. They're non-treatable. The laboratory fabricated a removable appliance, which will be seated following extraction and implant placement, and is used during the entire osteointegration time period. We see the teeth were removed, and the soft tissue was reflected to expose the defective bone contours prior to implant placement. Here I place five Han tapered implants uh, immediately into the socket site using the Han surgical protocol. Because we did have some defect, the Newport Biologic Resorbable Collagen Membrane, three to four months, was cut to size to extend beyond the defect, which would be corrected with allograft material. This membrane prevents invagination of epithelial tissue into the healing wound. We see that the Newport Biologic Cortical Cancellous Allograft Blend was placed firmly but carefully, and the membrane was passively tucked facially and palatally. This is critical. We then close the site We're using Vicro sutures, and this closed the reflected uh, gingival tissue. We see the postoperative panoramic radiograph illustrating the positioning of the Han tapered implants in the maxillary right quadrant. And then after a few short weeks of healing, the tissue responded well and was pink, firm, and healthy. Uh, we see that the laboratory fabricated inclusive custom abutments with gingival or slightly subgingival margins. The abutments were delivered using the lab-created seating jigs to ensure proper orientation, and the prosthetic screws were tightened to 35 newton centimeters. Proper torque is critical to preventing abutment loosening over time. And I love this process with Glidewell Lab. They created a PMMA try-in prosthesis uh, to help fine-tune the contours and occlusion. This allowed any necessary adjustments to be easily made in the prosthetic design prior to milling the final Bruxer restoration. The patient was involved in this process in making any aesthetic changes to the try-in prosthesis. Uh, we see that because of the excessive vertical bone loss created by the periodontally involved teeth, it was determined that the final Bruxer solid zirconia prosthesis would be designed and milled with gingival areas and pink coloring to maximize aesthetics. The gingival shade guide was used to select the proper shade for the soft tissue portion of the prosthesis. As we were coming to the end of this case, we see the final Bruxer solid zirconia prosthesis uh, seated in the mouth and evaluated for aesthetic and contours. The desired smile design was achieved and the patient was thrilled with the functional and aesthetic final result.